Hello everybody and welcome to the first and hopefully last edition of Jamie Tries to be Funny while explaining the double pendulum. In this video I'm not actually going to be getting into my code itself because one, that's really boring and two, computer code is really difficult to understand for somebody that hasn't done any coding before. What I am going to be looking at is the actual problem solving process that I went through when I was trying to code the double pendulum. But before we get into that, what actually is a double pendulum? Well, we all know what a normal pendulum is. It's just a rod with a pivot at the top and a mass at the bottom. A double pendulum, as the name implies, is two pendulums, one attached to the other. So when I was coding the double pendulum, the first thing that I did was try and figure out what the basic parts of a double pendulum were. And what I concluded was that a double pendulum is just two rods, one attached to the other, with two weights at the ends of the rods, and two pivot points, one at the top of the first rod, and one in between the first and the second rod. So this is pretty easy to code. All we do is we say that there's one line which starts at the middle of the screen and ends at some point, and a second line which starts at the end of the first line and ends at some point. And for simplicity, I just made it so that both the lines were vertical and both the lines were the same lengths. The masses are pretty easy to code for as well. All I did was say that there were two circles at the ends of both of the rods, and for simplicity, I just made them the same size. But this is when I ran into problem number one. How do I actually change the position of the rods? At the moment, if I run the code, we just have two rods which are just standing still. And if I wanted to change the position of the rods with my current setup, I would have to go into the code and physically change where the start and end of the rods were. So how did I solve this? Well, the first thing I did was to simplify my problem by forgetting about the second pendulum and the weight and just focusing on how do I change the position of the rod. And what I saw was all I actually have to know is where the end of the pendulum is going to be because the start of the pendulum is always fixed at the pivot point. The second thing I noticed was that what actually affects where the end of the rod is going to be is the angle between the rod and the pivot point. So I need to figure out a way of calculating where the end of the rod is going to be based on the angle between the rod and the pivot point. And what I did was I just made the rod and the angle into a triangle. Then using a bit of GCC trigonometry, we can calculate the length of the other two sides of the triangle based on the known length of the rod. And then all we have to do is tell the computer that this rod starts at the center of the screen and ends at this far down and this far across. Then I just did the same for the second rod, this time using the angle between the second rod and the end of the first rod. And I checked that it worked by increasing the angle over time. And I saw that the rod changed its position based on the angle between the rod and the pivot. But problem number two, this behaves nothing like an actual pendulum in real life. And it took me to decide that there was no way I was going to be able to work out an equation for how a pendulum worked in real life. But that's fine because one of the key skills of every programmer is plagiarism. Mark Zuckerberg plagiarized those two guys when making Facebook. The legendary game designer Spruce Campbell plagiarized Chameleon Run when making his game Cyber Jump. Surely there is some lonely, socially awkward pendulum nerd who sits in his room all day, surrounded by pendulums, so trying, trying to, to figure out M the equations of pendulum. Over two M1 plus M2 minus G sine pendulums. And it turns out that there is. I googled equation for double pendulum, clicked on the second link, scrolled down a bit, and Nani? Dear Lord, am I glad that I did not try and figure that out. Now, there's two things... Sorry, I don't understand. Now, there's two things that I noticed about this equation. One, it uses a bunch of variables that I haven't coded for yet. Namely, the velocity of the angle, which is just how much it changes over time, gravity, and 
the mass of the weights. So I add this in. The starting velocity of the pendulum is obviously zero because it's not moving. And for simplicity, I just say that both the masses weigh 100 something. And gravity, which again for simplicity, I'm just gonna say it's one. Now the next thing I noticed about these equations is that they don't actually give me the angle, they give me theta prime prime. What is theta prime prime? Well, theta is just a fancy maths way of saying angle. And I know from ad maths that the prime of distance is just speed and the prime of speed is just acceleration. So now that I understand these equations, I can put them into my code and I can calculate the acceleration of the angle. So I run this and nothing has changed. Well, obviously nothing has changed because problem number three, I need to take this acceleration of the angle and work out how much the angle changes. And this is actually really easy because all acceleration is, is just how much the velocity changes over time. So we can just add the acceleration to the old velocity to get the new velocity. And then all that velocity is, is just how much the angle changes over time. So all we have to do is take the old angle and add the velocity to it to get the new angle. So I run this code and it sort of works, but problem number four, why is my computer lagging like it's straight out of the 1980s running off of dial-up? Well, I spent hours trying to figure out why my simulation was lagging so much. And I was about to give up when I was having one final look through my code and saw that somehow my monkey hands had typed a nine where there should be a one. And this nine was making my simulation run at nine times the resolution of my screen, which in simple terms was making my computer run about as slowly as a school lunch queue on a Thursday afternoon. <coughs> so we replace the nine with a one and we run the code again and it actually looks like a pendulum. But problem number five, I want to see the path that the pendulum has taken. And this is another really easy fix. All that I do is take where the pendulum was and where the pendulum is and tell the computer to draw a line between those two points. And then it keeps doing that every time the pendulum moves and we get a nice white line to show us the path that the pendulum has taken. So the final test, does my code actually run like a real life double pendulum? To test this, all I did was I took one pendulum where both the angles were 45 degrees and I took another pendulum where the angle of the first pendulum was 45 degrees, but the angle of the second pendulum was 44.998, which is a tiny difference. But we run these two simulations and we see that we get completely different paths. So my code actually works. And that is a very brief summary of how I coded a double pendulum for my super fun independent project. Thank you for watching.